well, the, the, what's what's the um, the newbie question is um, what what's the approach to avoiding avoiding duplication of of data? So how do, what, what's how do you so so take take physical sporting venues for example? So what is it? Is there some agreed universal ID? How do you solve that problem? That is an excellent question. I, I don't know. I Dom, you might be the most qualified person on the call to answer that one. I don't want to put you on the spot there. Well, I, I mean, Ross, you, you've kind of barreled in with the, the question <laughs> that I think has been on many people's lips for yeah a little while now. Um, yeah, duplication is is an interesting one. Since the, from the word go, um, since you know, Open Active was conceived, it was we want data from source. That's the richest data. It should only come from source. So. Um, I guess we call it double entry. You should really have, if it's everyone active data, we want it coming from everyone active. We don't want it going into another booking system. So there's an education piece there. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, yeah, the, the places specifically, I, I believe that's a piece of work that's kind of ongoing and, you know, the question about IDs and, and how that works. Um, because the place is an interesting one because you can have, um, and there've been many conversations on this, from at a place, you can have a football club, a tennis club, and also a leisure center that operates. And so having a notion of that is really important because otherwise you get double entry of places and someone might spell it incorrectly and someone might like leave out a postcode. And so yeah, therefore you have exactly. three different places. And so um, it, it's a really, it's very personal at the moment because places search is becoming um, yeah more important. When we first started out, yeah. it was very much, you're looking for a session. It doesn't matter where it is. Whereas now the, 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 the user journey is important in terms of I'm in a place, I'm in this location, I want to find something to do. I don't mind if it's tennis or football or cricket or running, show me what's available there. And so I think the standards are now moving towards that. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm, I'm familiar with the active places power way of doing it, where you've got your, I think it's called what, um, site ID and then one or many facility IDs per, per activity in that site. Mm -hmm. Um, but whether that's been any in any way adopted as a you know the sort of pattern or universal standard, I, I don't know. No, it's a good question. I think and and Andrew would be best placed to um, to discuss that. I mean, it's a very rich uh, data set that, and it has been around for. I mean, I think it pre it predates Open Active. There's a, you know a large amount of data there, which is very useful in terms of how that is translated into kind of Open Active format. Um, that would be a question I think for um, either Howard or you know Nick. Uh, my colleague who has been involved largely in all these conversations so yeah, um, yeah. maybe one i don't know maybe one for w, a w3c call at some point again I, I i might have missed one recently but you know it, it's a very hot topic at the moment i know yeah. you're you're doing squash is that right yeah that's right yeah, yeah. so we we've assigned a unique id as you would do primary key yeah in your data for, for that um and, and we tether to google places so every every single place we add must have a google place first but then that's tethering to a commercial entity. Exactly. And yeah, so, the idea is obviously decentralization, keeping that's right. it within the organization so that they own it. Because yeah. yeah it seems to me really, really a core, a really, really core cool thing to you know have a firm position on, right? Uh, if, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I don't profess to be a specialist in open active standards yet. Uh, but I think I spoke to Howard about this kind of link to active places, and I think it's almost a recommended link at the moment rather than a mandatory link. So I think we recommend that if 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 the place the activity is occurring is in active places, you include the, the link to that data over in in active places. But I, think, yeah. I don't think we can make it a mandatory because uh -huh. all of the sites where activities occur are in active places. Yeah. Cool. That was a, a good intro. Um, I think yeah, I, I'm slightly concerned that Anne-Marie hasn't joined us yet, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. Uh, I think, um, it's, uh, you know, we're nearly 10 minutes in now. So if, if we get going and then uh, maybe we can uh, rejig jig the agenda a little bit and hopefully she will she will be joining us at some point. Um, so thank you everyone for joining. Welcome to the Adoption Engagement Forum on 3rd of March, uh, 2023. Um, I don't know exactly how I will do the recording, but if you, you're watching watching the recording and if you're watching the preamble, then uh, then hopefully you're, you're all still with us and you're not too confused about what is going on. 
and just start with the uh, usual reminder for anyone who is new to the group or anyone watching the recording who is new to Open Active to please join the Open Active Slack workspace if you haven't already. And um, that's the best place to keep up to date with everything that's going on with the community forums, which are, which are open for anyone to join, both both this one, the Adoption Engagement Forum, and also the W3C group, um, which also meets fortnightly and um, focuses on uh, maintaining and, and updating the Open Active standards. And uh, a link to these slides will be in the description um, of the recording, so um, you'll be able to click through it. And these these links on the slide are all clickable, um, so you can you can join uh, join and look through all of these links. Quick look at the agenda today. We are due to have Anne Marie here today to talk uh, about M MCR Active, but I think she must just be running a bit late or something. She hasn't quite joined us yet, um, but hopefully she'll be joining us at some point. Um, I think also uh, I'm hoping that uh, Nish is aware of this. I haven't actually spoken to him directly, but we usually have Charlie um, here as a representative for the AEF on the steering committee uh, who um, provides updates on, on the latest steering committee uh, meetings. But I think he's on annual leave this week, so he's he's passed that responsibility over to Nish. So hopefully Nish is, is <laughs> aware of that and I'm not just uh, springing, springing that on him. And then we're also due to have uh, Joe Massey, uh, who is part of the ODI team. He's a senior researcher at the ODI. He should be joining us around 11-ish or, or just after 11 um, to give an update on a community survey um, that will be going out over the next few days, probably early next week, um, which will give everyone an opportunity to ha have their say in the future direction of um, Open Active. So that should be good as well. And then there should be a bit of time at the end for uh, any other business, hopefully. Um, so as I say, we're due to start with uh, uh, Anne-Marie from MCR Active, but as she hasn't uh, joined us yet, I don't know if Nish, would you be happy to lead off with a bit of a steering committee update and then and then hopefully um, Anne-Marie will be joining us soon? Yeah, no worries. I can be the warm-up act. Um, <laughs> You know, these these uh, these main rock stars are always late for their main gigs, so, you know, it's fine. Um, cool. So we had uh, a steering committee meeting on uh, Wednesday last week. God, it feels ages ago now. Um, all the way back in February. Um, and uh, let me get up the agenda to remind myself what we'll discuss. Yep. Yeah, so um, we... Uh, covered a few uh, governance things related to the committee. So uh, it was agreed that there will be a rotating chair starting with Eugene um, and that there'll be a couple of others uh, who will do a couple of the meetings each. So uh, minor, minor governance points there. Um, and then the, the bulk of the meeting was split up into, into two main things actually, which was um, looking at use case framework process. So um, I know uh, uh, Tim and others on the call can speak more to this in in where it's come from and where it's going next. But use cases are um, the the vehicle that Open Active will use to bring together different organisations and individuals that that are interested in pursuing a, a given use case topic of of uh, Open Active related conversation, um, and will. Uh, use those communities around each use case to um, figure out uh, support structures, who we can bring in, uh, what we're missing, what we need to do next, do we need to go bring, talk, take something to the W3C committee, etc. So it's just a way to organize uh, the groups that I want to move forward the same sort of um, use cases. Um, so Andrew presented us with where we're up to so far with um, the proposed framework. We got some feedback from from the group, and I think it was all quite quite positively received. And I think the main the main sort of discussion room was this this is all really great. How do we get this um, sort of moving on the ground and tested and figure out what what the value exchange is? You know, why would anyone in Open Active or outside of Open Active want to do the effort of bringing together a group of people to talk about stuff if they're not getting something out of it. So what is what is the what is the core thing we're going to make clear to the use case 
or prototypical use case groups um, that they're going to get back in terms of whatever support or ways forward or you know, whatever it might be. Um, and so I, I believe there's a plan at the next AEF to bring this up in a lot more detail and sort of get some ideas from this group uh, and maybe the wider ecosystem that doesn't make this call. Um, actually, I'll pause there quickly just in case there's any questions on that, because I'm going to go through quite quickly. But um, I know use cases are going to be quite an important vehicle for an actor going forward. Okay, I'll carry on. Um, I guess, Andrew and Tim, any questions related to this, people can, can aim in your direction. Yeah, seeing some nodding, good. Um, we then um, talked a bit about uh, open active governance as a whole. So, God, I say governance twice in this update. Charlie's going to be upset they delegated it to me. Um, so this was more about open active um, in its next phase. So are we phase five or six? I can't remember. Five. Five. Yeah. So what's what is what is what is phase six look like from a from a point of view of um, decision making, funding, who's doing what, um, who's involved, all the rest of it. So there was uh, a good session on on how we're getting feedback from the wider community on what people need to be, you know, what ask not what you can do for a black to what can a black do for you kind of thing. So what is it that the community need and want to see from the way open actives run? And so mainly it was a, a conversation about how we get that feedback and how we use it, how we're going to decide uh, different options and put those back to the community. You know, all that, all that sort of process needs to be needs to be done. So it's it's a decision made by all of us, or at least inputted by all of us, um, so that we all have a sense of where it's going and what it can be. Again, I'll pause there, and maybe questions are more aimed at Andrew on this one. If anyone has any, so Joe is going to come and introduce this in a moment. Um, so I don't want to steal his thunder too much, but the the, the aim is to. Uh, de define the kind of future operating model and future governance model for the open active initiative um and then uh by the end of i think it's by the end of april having a roadmap for how we go from what we have today to, to, to the preferred model for the future and that, that preferred model will be so will be selected by the steering committee thank you operating model was the phrase i was looking for thank you that is it operating model um and then I think that was the bulk. That was the bulk of the topics, the use case frameworks, and the operating model. Uh, Charlie gave an update from this group, um, AEF update to the steering committee about what we talked about at the last meeting. Um, and I don't think there was any questions or actions from that from the group. Uh, and then we explored wider funding opportunities. You know, what, what can what can the committee see on the ground that could be useful? I think Charlie mentioned something about uh, a fund in in London um that's being launched and there's leveling up funding happening across the country so uh, it'd be great if anyone's got any of those types of opportunities that we want to surface to in in any of these conversations going forward um i guess maybe bring up on this call the ideal and then we can feed it back in through through charlie and others in that committee um i think that's it for me unless there's any questions There's also minutes to these to these committee meetings, which which are available open. I don't know where they are. Maybe this question came up last because I, I was actually looking for them <laughs> in prep for this little section. Uh, yes, yeah, so they're, they're saved in the um, public open active um, Google Drive, which is where the AEF uh, slides and things are as well. The easiest way to find them, and this is a quite a recent update, so it might be that you. Um, you looked before this was updated, but if you go to the Open Active website and click on About across the top, um, it gives you a list of all the different groups. And under Steering Committee, there's a there's a link there to the to the latest note. And that, and that's a work in progress. I think the two most recent um, meetings are there, and then there is a folder for twenty two twenty two, which is currently empty, but that will that will be. Uh, filled <laughs> as soon as as soon as possible by um by judy who's the acts as the secretariat for the for the steering committee but yeah the the latest two meetings are, are both available there did anyone have any questions for either andrew or nish
Nope. Doesn't look like there are any. Was there anything you wanted to add, um, Andrew, about anything that, that Nish brought up? Uh, no, I think it was a good summary of the steering committee meeting. Um, I, I think the, the next couple of meetings are going to be really important for the initiative. So, so the March meeting and the April meeting, because they're going to be kind of looking at this, this governance piece in re a lot more detail. Um, but, but no, I, I, I don't think that there's much I want to add at this stage. Have we got a Marie yet, then, Tim? Brilliant. Uh, no, I don't think we do. Unfortunately, I uh, I have emailed her, but but not had a reply yet. So I don't know whether she's been um, held up somewhere else, or she maybe had the time slightly wrong or something. I'm not sure. But um, but uh, yeah, I've just messaged Joe, and uh, he should be joining us imminently, hopefully, um, to, to talk about the survey. So we can we can hand to hand to him once he once he joins. So. Yeah, I don't know if you want to give him any more of an, an intro just quickly before he joins. Oh, there he is, just right on cue. Let him uh, do it. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Uh, just quickly uh, before going to Joe, and it might, might be helpful for Joe as, as he's new to the group, but um, usually at the start of the call, I do a quick uh, round of intros just for the benefit of anyone new and anyone watching the recording who's new. And I, I forgot to do that. So apologies for being a bit all over the place in today's meeting but you know we'll we'll do, we'll do things out of order with we'll a bit of a jazz jazz meeting this morning um so yeah if, if you don't mind just going around and, and quickly introducing each other so um i'll start with myself i'm tim corby and i'm an engagement consultant at the open data institute and i am um, i work on the open active project um if i could come to uh dom next please yes of course hi i'm dom from uh i'm in um, I work with Dominic and Nish here also on the call. And um, yeah, we consume a lot of open active data and we love it. Great. Thanks, Dom. Uh, I guess I'll go through all the IMINs. So, <laughs> Dominic, if I could come to you next. Hi, everyone. Dominic here from IMIN. Um, yeah, working with different projects and accounts at IMIN. That's me. Thank you. And uh, you've already heard from him, but uh, Nish, if you don't mind just introducing yourself. Hello, yeah, Nish from I'm in, uh, one of the directors here, and I also sit on the steering committee for Open Active. Great, thank you, uh, Nish. Uh, Ross? Yeah, uh, Ross Gehring. Um, I'm uh, a contract CTO for a couple of uh, Australian companies, and I have a, um, uh, a startup sort of uh, background, semi hobbyist uh, project based on uh, uh, Squash uh, with the Squash Players app. Thanks, Ross. Uh, Andrew? Uh, hi, I'm Andrew Newman. I'm the Principal Data Specialist at the Open Data Institute and the ODI's project lead for Open Active. Uh, I'm in month three of this now, so I'm, I'm starting to get my feet under the table a little bit, but I still don't know very much, so be kind. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Dan? Um, yeah, hi all, uh, Dan from Open Data Services Cooperative. Um, our involvement was around, we did some consultancy work with Sport England. Um, and yeah, just here just to see how the expertise we have could support the uh, the Open Active uh, data standard. And also, uh, just quickly, Ross, are you, do you know Stephen Flower from our organisation? Uh, no, I don't. No, all right. He's, I'm sure he's spoken about that squash app or oh. initiative that he just mentioned. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Dan. Uh, Chris? Hi, all. Chris Bancroft, the data management specialist here at the ODI, working on the Open Active initiative. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Geraldine? Hi, good morning. Um, so, yeah, so I'm Geraldine. I work for Yorkshire Sport Foundation as a data and insight manager. Thank you. And leads nicely onto Jules. Hi, I'm Jules, the uh, Communication Manager for York Sport Foundation, having this co open active conversation for about five years now. Thanks, Jules. Uh, Sophia? Hi, I'm Sophia Worth. I'm working at the ODI as a graduate trainee, and I'm uh, on the policy work stream on open active. Thank you. And Tom? Hi, everyone. I am Tom, co-founder at Played, and we use open data to make it easier for people to find and book sports activities online and good good to see your apologies i'm not on camera today i'm a bit on the move 
Great. Thanks, Tom. And I think that leaves Joe. So, Joe, I don't know if you'd want to introduce yourself and then lead into uh, what you're here to talk about. Sure. Thanks, Tim. Um, so, hello, everyone. Really, really great to be here and really great to meet you all. I um, heard a lot about this group, so, so looking forward to, to taking part today. Um, my name's Joe. I'm a senior researcher here at the ODI. I um, primarily have worked on our um, data institutions program um, over the last couple of years and, and really interested in organisations that are stewarding data and, and data infrastructure on behalf of others, um, which Open Active kind of falls un under that area of interest. And, and I've been tasked with um, working on um, the, the governance work stream of, of the ODI's work on Open Active. And what that involves is to um, do some research and, and thinking and, and building on uh, pre a lot of previous work that's been done by the likes of ODSC and, and others on, on how Open Active works as an organization and, and how is it, well, not as an organization yet, but how it could work as an organization and, and how it's currently stewarded. Um, so, so the way that we've been approaching this work um, is to do a lot of research on kind of other similar organizations and to try and um, pull together what options might be available for open active going forward and um, so the aim of this research is to try to pull together a, a, a couple of a number of options for potential organizational design um, models for open active in the future and that will include things like um, potential options in terms of funding um, bus and business models and um, things around governance and, and decision making um, in the in the initiative um, as well as the legal form and, and what that looks like um, kind of fr from the legal perspective. So we're taking quite a, a broad approach and a really important part um, of that, given the fact that um, Open Active is a community-led initiative, is to engage with the broad, uh, the community in the broadest sense of the world, a word, and, and to, to work with members of the, uh, the people who are involved with Open Active to understand what you you and, and and others would expect from and, and would like to see from open active um, in the future in terms of how it's organized from a kind of structural perspective um, in order to do that we've we've put together um, a survey which we will be launching next week um, and so the reason i've kind of come here today was to to let you all know about that and and to give you kind of a an early heads up that that will be coming over the next couple of weeks and we'd really kind of appreciate your um, insight and input into that survey and, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to also help us with kind of sharing it with with some of your, your partners and colleagues and, and others who are interested in in contributing and, and uh, help consulting on on kind of the future of, of Open Active um, and yeah it, it, it's not you know it's not the, the longest survey so we, we hope it won't take up too much of your time um, but we think it's really useful for us to learn a bit more about how you see um, open active in the future. Um, we'll also be hosting a kind of drop in town hall event um, the week after next, um, where it will be kind of a, an open forum for you know, people to come and chat to us and, and, and discuss certain particular ideas. If, if there's something that you know, doesn't quite fit into a survey, we know um, sometimes some ideas can be easier to talk about than, than to write down. So we've got that there as well. And of course, um, today, if there's anything, um, any questions or, or thoughts you have, um, on on this area uh, and or would like to clarify anything with how we're going about this work um, then yeah the, the, the floor is open um, and yeah feel free to ask any any questions or, or anything like that but, I'll, but quickly before that I'll just ask if Andrew if there's anything Andrew wanted to add uh, on top of that if, if I covered everything no I think you've covered everything I, I would have covered there Joe thank you um, and I, just to repeat the message, I think that what, you know, we're going to have quite a short time window where this survey is open so we can get the results together before the end of March. So once we launch this on Monday, we would appreciate anything anyone can do to amplify it. So there will be LinkedIn posts and Twitter posts and, 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 and so on. So, so when we launch the survey, you know, we'd appreciate you sharing it with your networks so we can get the widest possible reach. Brilliant. Thanks, Joe. Um, does anyone have any questions for Joe about this work? Don't want to put you on the spot, Dan, but it looked like you unmuted. Were you on the brink of saying something? Or... Uh, no, I wasn't actually, but um, I guess I might as well say to Joe, I think we fed in a fair amount through that, um, through the reports written, but if there's anything else you need from us, then feel free to give me a shout and we can set something up. 
Great, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. That's been re that's already been a really um, useful resource. So, yeah, I'll let you know. <clears throat> okay, no worries. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Joe? Looks like you covered it so well, Joe, so eloquently and sufficiently that everyone is there. I don't know. Is, I don't know if um, you'd be able to just give us a little, slight flavour of of what kind of things are in there, and, and you know what what type. Get you know just get people thinking about types of things that you'll be asking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the the kind of first section of the survey relates mostly to finding out a bit about who the kind of respondent is so um, the, the the kind of sector that your organization operates in how well you know open active and and the role that you play um in the open active ecosystem um the second part is kind of about governance and how decisions are made at, at, within open active going forward um so kind of useful to reflect on um how things yeah, yeah what, how how you might see a kind of the, the future of of open active and, and how different groups could be involved um, i think that's probably the way to start thinking about that um area and then the the, the second bulky uh, section is around financing um, so obviously we need to think about how open active can become sustainable going forward and and uh, are kind of very open to any suggestions on on what that could look like um, as we all want to see open active continuing well into the future um, and then the last section is, yeah, again, very, a bit more kind of forward looking and, and, and returning a bit to our kind of first principles as open active and, and what we want to see um, in the kind of very near term and, and then also looking, looking forward and further into the future. Brilliant. Thanks, Chair. I think that's helpful. Um, and so you said, was it Monday you said that that's due to go out? Yeah, so it will be out on Monday morning, hopefully first thing, if David and I can... Uh, can get ourselves together um, and then it will be out for around two weeks brilliant and so people can find that link through all the usual social channels um so that'd be yeah in um twitter the open active channels and then presumably um at the open active slack workspace as well there'll, there'll be a link there so, so exactly yeah it'd be great if um if we could get res responses from all of you, we'd, we'd, we'd really appreciate that. And, and as, as Joe said, yeah, to, uh, sort of cascading and sharing it with you, the rest of your networks and partners as well, because we want to get as um, broad a group of voices contributing to that as possible. So that, that'd be really useful. Thank you. I'm going to chip in there, having snuck into the meeting like a teenager at two in the morning. Um, but yeah, if, if people can share, once we put it out on LinkedIn, as we found with a, a lot of these things through the channel, we get far more amplification when people share it through their own networks as well. So once you do see it, please um, do share that yourselves. It just adds a bit more weight to it as we put it out. So we'll probably get more interaction if it's going <laughs> almost through, well, if it's forwarded through your 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 personal um, LinkedIn things, sharing the, the, the open active post, it's just gonna get a bit more traction. Cool. Uh, I'm just <clears throat> sorry, Tim. I just wanted to say yeah, no, it's not a question. Um, th this is all. It's really exciting. This is. I, I really enjoyed listening to that, Joe. And um, it's nice that the kind of this is feels like a crescendo of of yeah many years of hard work and and yeah it feels like a seminal moment. So it's very exciting. That this is like the next step for the organisation. And and you saying at the end that the primary goal is is sustainability and, and keeping I'm and go. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Freudian slip. Uh, keeping open active going for for many years to come is is great right because it's you know this is all about the the ecosystem and creating a a, a way for companies to come in and flourish so i think it's it's incredibly exciting and it's so nice that this is this is here right and you know these we're getting feedback from the people who are doing all the hard work on the ground so yeah really really exciting thanks thanks dom and yeah uh, yeah just to kind of again uh, reiterate how yeah it's a, it feels like a quite an Im important moment and we're really excited to get the broader community's input um at this moment i think it's really important that we continue with that kind of model so really looking forward to hearing everyone's thoughts um and yeah we'll see what comes out of it 
Great. Thanks, Joe. I don't know if you I didn't want to put you on the spot. So if you're if you're not ready to share, no problem. But I don't know if there is if you if there's any more of a kind of timetable about what you know where the input will go into and where that will lead to sort of the roadmap for that over, over the rest of the year yeah so um the this this uh, survey will be kind of combined with a lot of the research um we've been doing and, and presented to the steering committee this month um and then in the following month we'll be working on developing kind of that roadmap um tim that you're, you're alluding to so that is coming um but probably we'll know more in kind of the month of april um but happy to come back and and talk about that once we have a clearer picture and uh, similarly with the, the, the survey if, if people are interested i'm happy to come back and share a bit of kind of the insight that, that came out from that great thanks joe and um, you, you know we've got um got charlie and also nish who uh, who represent the steering committee on um on uh this call so um there's that there's that sort of uh, flow of information which is which two way as well so be able to feed it feed into them uh, if if you want anything raised at the steering committee and that they'll be able to feed back to this group as well on, on the discussions that have been going on in the steering committee as this as this work progresses um unfortunately Anne marie um isn't uh, able to join us today she, she's had something come up i've just had a message from her um so we don't actually have anything else on the agenda so i don't know if there's we've sort of got a abroad any other business if, if anyone has any questions or anything they'd like to raise in in similar fashion to to how um the question ross raised earlier in the call and um, so yeah I'd, I'd, uh, open the floor now i think ross looks like you are you're poised to jump in with your, with your <laughs> You wanted to add? Yeah, possibly more more newbie questions. Um, no, go for it. Do, do you have um, is one um, project management system in place here to manage tasks, roles, priorities, etc.? That is a good question. Um, I don't know who's best place to answer that. Um, Andrew, maybe I don't want to put you on the spot, but maybe maybe if I could come to you, I think you're on mute. Um, so I, I think one of the things that we need to think about as Open Active moves forward is how we manage the kind of uh, maintenance uh, and contributions to the maintenance of, of all of the artefacts and the infrastructure. Um, at the moment, that is largely done, I think, through GitHub and the use of GitHub issues. Um, I'm looking at Chris because I know Chris has been doing some analysis of the, the issues on GitHub recently and starting to look at um, you know, the age of issues, how long they've been open for. I, I think there's a piece of work to do in terms of um, rationalising issues that are, are either resolved and haven't been marked as resolved or uh, unresolved and working out whether they need to be resolved still. Um, Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about that work? Yes, sure. Um, so in terms of the GitHub issues, yes, as Andrew alluded to, there's a historic um, issues are still outstanding. Um, you don't know how, if they're, you know, they're still open, have they been resolved? Well, you know, it, for all intents and purposes, they may be, um, but I'm trying to build a process, um, you know, I've done a, built a sort of a process map to sort of look, check that flow of if somebody raises an issue um, via GitHub, what are those next steps? Who is gonna be responsible for um solving those issues and it's making sure that we have the right i'm not an expert on github so some of these terms that you know if people know them great if they don't don't worry but you can have you can be a watcher of an issue or you can be a collaborator of an issue so we need to make sure that we have the right people um watching or collaborating so um you know to so that these are resolved uh, correctly um because someone who potentially might raise an issue might find an issue within the feed um you know Dom, i'm going to pick on you just for um just say that you know you raise an issue on github you may not know who the right person to assign that may be um to whoever you know so to a publisher so it's making sure the right people are watching or collaborating so that they get the ping and then they can get resolved and it's working with the community um in terms of getting them to close the issue and to resolve whilst we're, you know, kind of stewarding. It's, you know, it's not up to, you know, as the ODI, just be, you know, as we are stewarding this initiative, it's not 
the ODI isn't open active. Open active, as we all know, is the community wide initiative of you know getting people active and helping them find those opportunities to get active. So that's what we're doing in terms of the, the issues at the moment is trying to get that process built up um, and then start looking at the backlog um, of issues that are outstanding. That's great. Thanks, Chris. I think I think a couple of things I would add. So first of all, because this is kind of a distributed data infrastructure, um, you can raise, We rec I think we recommend that providers of, of open active feeds create a GitHub instance so people can raise issues against the individual feeds. Um, and then there are some of the kind of core products are on GitHub as well, so you can raise issues against those things like the activity list and the facilities type list. Um, and I think the standards are on GitHub as well. Um, so that's 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 that part. I think the other part is is you know sometimes people raise issues because they want support, and and I think I would encourage anyone who wants to support support to use Slack. So we have an, an open active Slack. Uh, there are channels for different aspects of the initiative in there, um, and and I think the community is pretty good at discussion within the Slack channel. Um, is that right, Tim? Yes, yeah, it's a, it's a good space um, to ask questions and things, and, and there's usually lots of people, um, people like Dom at I'm in who, who are great, and Nish as well, who are great, and um, Tom, sorry, I can't name check everyone, but yeah, there's lots of people in the community who are great at jumping in and, and answering queries, so um, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good place to to ask any questions, definitely. Does that um, help? A follow-up question, so, um, so is, um, in terms of project management you know being task driven um are the, in, on github again I'm, I'm actually not that overly familiar with github becoming more so um is it suitable for things which don't relate to technology so random example let's say there's a, a to-do one i don't know sales and marketing which has no relation directly to the technology is github helpful for that or not at all i don't know uh, probably not um and, and I think there are probably other discussions have in the community about how we co improve collaboration. Um, I, I guess from an ODI lens, it's about how we are engaging with the community, but actually it's about how you build that collaboration within the community. Um, I, I think there's a bit of thinking to do there still. Yeah, I, I might have some suggestions or ideas in that regard that you might want to. So. I, I'd be happy to have a chat. I'm happy to talk to anyone about it. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, Great, thanks, Ross. Uh, Dan, you've got your hand up. I didn't, didn't know if you wanted to come in there. Sorry, you're you're muted. Yeah, so the, the way we approach things with open referral is we have there's a forum on the website for open referral, and there's different um, threads there. There's a technical one, there's a general um, thread. Um, so it's similar to the open active Slack, and I guess it's 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 the same kind of principle. But then we have um, then we have the work group and we have um, we have like a Trello board that we manage with the client themselves, which I think is probably the where the types of conversations that you're talking about are having, but they're not necessarily open. And I think it just really depends, uh, you know, depending on the context and what setup you have as to how open those things, because I'm sure the ODI have got all kinds of project management stuff going on there. And but where where does the line between what they're doing as the stewards and what the community involved with sit? And I think that's probably what needs to be ironed out here. Yeah, I think you're right, Tom. <laughs> there are various products uh, in the market that enable those kind of open source communities to, to do tasking and to collaborate. And, and I think Howard's got some thoughts on those. I'll pop a link to the uh, open referral forum in the chat so you can see it. Great. Thank you, Dan. That'd be useful. Um, Jules, uh, come to you next. Uh, just the usual questions. Uh, open Club and Organisation Finder. Uh, there should be one. Uh, Parkrun, are they going to open their data? I know they have a finder done with a football, so that's a, a trainer company. So, but they, so they do upload their data, but it doesn't seem to be open. And they are majorly funded by sporting. So, that would probably be a good thing if they did. And the third one is the, uh, is this including a, a way to verify? or put campaign tags into activities. So people can have set filters for opening school facilities or half or trusted providers, like social prescribers. The, the, the questions probably have very long answers. Sorry, I just felt like raising them. 
no that's always always useful to to um to raise them jules so yeah don't don't need to apologize for that at all um uh i don't know who the best people to to talk about uh, these ones are in sorry. terms of the club and organization sorry andrew are you going to come in yeah i was going to kind of have a go and i probably get yeah, wrong because i'm still quite new so so in terms of the club and organization finder i i don't think that is possible with the current open active data model I think it would be a development of the model. Um, I also think in terms of the scope of the phase five work that ODI is being paid to deliver by Sport England, it wouldn't be in the scope of that work. But we are about to start thinking about what a phase six might look like and what it might include. So I will add those to that list um, because, you know, if, if we, we will have be having conversations with Sport England about funding and if we could talk to them about uh, club find uh, like an open club finder that that might be quite an interesting discussion i, I can't promise anything obviously at all <laughs> so, 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 so that it my... just seems that club finders is that is where you start you start with yeah. where these things are and then you go oh right, what are they doing and when and when they're not doing anything they're still there and people who are looking for something would long to look where things are rather than just when jules yeah. can i just ask a quick question on that how how do you see this this data existing in that is it is it static data it's it's an email address and a telephone number How, what does it look like in an ideal world? essentially that that's yes that's where it starts we've had club finders for well since before twitter really and it's, that's always been the the grip the building block of where you build your organizations and your communication channels and your newsletters and so everyone has a public facing thing that people can find it's they will always go out of date, but it's one of these things that when people are using the system, these will be flagged up and the system will become more refreshed when it takes off. But at the moment, it just seems a, a major gap. Interesting. I mean, we've got active places. So, you know, there is there is a national solution that, that should theoretically be a switch. I know there's you can't search for something via time and geography in quite the same way. But there are way there should be ways of doing it because people are looking for something then having the different options to find it would seem to be a, a sensible thing i think yeah. um dom, dom and chris would know the standards better than better than i do but as i understand it i think there there is a way to model data about an organization in in the standard but it's in relation to the organization that runs an activity rather than it being about the organization in its own right but i think in theory it should it shouldn't be too hard to tweak that model of data about an organization to to be able to publish it as data about an organization but I might have i've to... seen one finder that will show uh, an activity and a club in the same kind of geography in the finding i can't remember which one it was i guess the difference is you're looking for a canonical list of organizations rather than organizations being created by the people who are creating the activities no i've forgotten what canonical means <laughs> a, a, a reference data set like the activity list can like the a canonical list, list of, of activities that doesn't really change it's always static oh yeah regular ones yeah that's always going to be part of the information we always want to just be a hub so people could go find something oh yeah. that looks interesting i'll go there rather than a one-stop shop but it's a single book here now but yeah i know it's two different completely two different kinds of data it's like trying to keep cats in a fish tank but it's still relevant to the same people that want it yeah yeah i, I, I always I enjoy think... your uh your metaphors Joe. <laughs> Yeah. We, we just so you know we, we take a crowdsourcing approach to um accumulating venue data so which which we're very happy with excellent because obviously once you know who they are then you can communicate with them and say hey what activities have you got open active and just keep that conversation going rather than them yeah them suddenly falling off the face of the earth when they don't yeah. do anything anymore yeah i think just adding to this that we've discussed this before jules and it's uh essentially there's been static databases of clubs around for a while and i think unless there's activities taking place within that club that people can uh search or get involved in um by nature that act the the uh place or the club sorry 
is therefore not live. And I think the challenge, the thing is connecting the dots of having activities in a place. Great. If there are activities in a place, the metadata of that is actually the club in which it takes place. And so essentially, yeah, connecting the dots where I think it was touched on a little bit more earlier with places is having a kind of sub of that, which is a club, which could, there could be multiple clubs in each place. How do then we relate the activities to those clubs, to those places to be able to create a good search experience, um, which we've played around with a bit with places and then relating activities to places because they're part of the activity data. But the fundamentally, or the fundamental thing I can't understand is how you can do that without the activity data in the first place uh, until you then just get an experience where you you see a picture of a club, the name of a club, you go onto it and you don't know what to do next. That's, to me, a poor, poor consumer experience that we want to avoid and something that can be done e easily in other ways, um, for example, from existing databases. I was talking to one uh, football club and they'll, they'll have 30 sessions in a week that are just ongoing, that people can join up, like the under 12s, under 13s, et cetera. And if they put all of that in Activity Finder, that would fill out three or four pages of just one thing. And the club next door who does the same thing but doesn't list each one because it's a big admin load to keep putting them up, they wouldn't appear at all. It's just a, it's difficult to know how it's all going to fit together, to be honest. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's certainly an interesting question and, and one that, that warrants um, discussion, I think. Uh, Nish has just suggested that this might be a good W3C topic, so I don't know if um, you'd be able to take that away, Andrew, and possibly think about um, including that on a, on a future agenda, a W3C call. Yeah, I, I think that's a good call. I just yeah. wanted to ask on the park run uh, question that Jules raised, which... Uh, yeah. um, I also have the same question. I think with this one, I don't. There's no one from Sporting on the call, is there? Um, but I, I think either we need to. Know, I, so speaking bluntly, I think uh, Jules, you said they get a lot of funding from Sport England. Ergo, is that a route? Yeah. So a decent, a decent wedge of money. Fine. If Sport England aren't able to push the open active agenda through that funding route for whatever reason, political or otherwise. Be good just to know that so we can figure out a different route with Parkrun. Because otherwise, I think we've had this question for 18 months, even two years, which is they get a shed load of funding. Open Active may be in there. If, if it is or isn't, can Sport England ask them to do something? Um, have they asked them to do something and have Parkrun said no? Like, if we just get a good understanding of what's happening, we can actually figure out a next step. Because I think every single you know active partnership that's working with open data every single local authority whoever is using open data as long as it's not very sports specific will want to use this parkrun data because obviously it's so it's so um uh, uh prevalent geographically and so um popular as a as an activity so it would be a real win for open active to make this happen and it's come up and down over the last five years uh if you just get to know where we stand and what what as a community, what can we do about it? You know, not just saying Sport England, you should do something. If they can't do something, how else are we as a group going to make this happen? Thanks, Nish. Um, and and I, 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 just to add to that, I think that's the right approach in general to larger um, providers of date of activities where like there's route one, which is in this case, most obvious via Sport England, but we i think there's some other reasons why that's not super possible what's route two what's route three what's route four and try and as a community be able to go through those high priority um data sets that we can open and be like okay if this doesn't work that doesn't mean we give up we try another route because like yeah it seems like these are all gonna add significant value to the open active community so yeah i think that's going through that mechanism might be useful for this group thanks i, th I think that's a good point i think that plays into the, the earlier question and conversation about the the tools that the, the community has to to 
you know talk about topics like this and and keep track of keep track of what's going on so yeah i think that's another one we can take away i think andrew and maybe bring that up with with adam and and then um maybe that's a topic topic of uh conversation for for a future aef as well about um having a discussion about about how this is managed as a community because i think part of the like funding the where it's being more involved in funding agreements that is not it's only useful if it's enforced and it doesn't seem like it's being enforced so therefore it's not useful um so yeah it just i think if we again shame sporting the not on the call but it is literally pointless if it's not able to be enforced like any kind of rule or legislation so like we may as well just get to the bottom of what what that is they they encourage them to to open the data but i think i think in this case of park run it is that it is such a big target that i think definitely asking some questions would be very useful and I, yeah. I think in other open data initiatives where it has been more legislation led i think that that has been the thing that has driven the change a la open banking etc um where like i think maybe based on industry maybe based on mech like levers that can be pulled it doesn't seem like we're approaching it with the same rigor that other data standards have have approached it which is like we've got this power to influence the shape that we want things to go to let's just figure out whether we can use it or whether we like because at the moment we don't really know whether it's a viable option if it's not a viable option great we can move on and try another option but it's kind of like a soft soft way of kind of encouraging it but like all things encouragement doesn't lead to um action it's really interesting coming from the department of environment food and rural affairs you know working in that sector that environment sector and the farming sector it is heavily regulated and a lot of that heavy regulation is to do with that the money that we give to farmers and you know protecting humans from from harm um and it's really interesting coming into this sector and, and looking at it it's, it's the regulation is much lighter um the current government government won't have an appetite to introduce new regulation um you know that, that's just not their thing <laughs> uh they're, they're trying to get rid of it, legislation but i think you're right there's something about how perhaps we need to talk to the grants team in sports england to understand a bit more about how they um enforce grants um we, we know that the model contracts for leisure operators include standard clauses around open data so maybe we need to be talking to uh, and that's what and kind of see that as job done but then you know local authorities monitoring those contracts are, are they doing the things they need to be doing it, it, it's an interesting area um but i wouldn't be holding out for new regulation at the moment yeah and i and i think I think this comes up a, a few times in the steering committee, actually, in which point we do 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 are present on, and uh, the, I know what the answer is going to be here when we ask Splendid, right? I'm going through the process. So they're going to say no, we can't. That this isn't a thing we can do, and as long as we have that as okay, Sport England, um, this isn't to vilify you as as the as as the people that could have but haven't. This is to say, right? But you're part of Open Active. You can't do some stuff. What can we do? Like you still hold the best relationship to Park Run. Fine, don't we can't force it into the contract or whatever. But how else are you going to help us do this? Um, if it's opening some doors or arranging a meeting or whatever it might be, you know, Park Run need to come up with a number to to fund the development. Well, fine, let's get the number out there and see how we can all figure out how to how to find that that sponsorship or whatever else it might be. You know, if it's 10k, we'll split England just lock 10k at that because it's such a national partner. So I think it's getting past this uh, finger pointing at Sport England, which is not what we're trying to do. It is just tell us where we're at. You, if you agree, Park Run's important to open up, great shared problem. How are we all going to figure that out? Because we all want it. So we should all have some ideas to get there. I think Tim and I can take this back and have a chat with, with Sport England about it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still new. I can still ask really silly questions. I'm happy to go and talk to Park Run as a complete novice about their data. You know, I, I can I can use that as a a way in as someone who doesn't know the sector um I, one thing i did i did have a quick look at park run um and, and some of their data and they're, they're doing some quite interesting stuff one thing i did notice though is this they're, they're, they're kind of one of their sponsors i think it's brooks running have an activity finder on their website which points you at where their nearest park run is and i'm kind of wondering whether they are commercializing their data 
so that, that might make it less attractive to make it open um if they're looking I think, at uh, I think Jules has actually just shared that link in the in the chat so that was <laughs> that was well timed yeah um, and so, so just I can't really wonder that, you know from a part run perspective whether it's making the data open would almost be a disincentive which feels wrong uh, this is <laughs> five million pounds of lottery funding good cause going to park run so we have a dog in this fight yeah yeah I think no, I think uh, sorry, we're just about hitting time, so I think I might have to to wrap this conversation up. But yeah, it's certainly certainly one that we can revisit, and it'll be useful. And unfortunately, Adam wasn't able to join us this week from Sport England, but he is usually here, so possibly one to revisit with him as well. I think it's certainly a fair challenge, but I think also I'd have to bear in mind the the limitations on the influence that Sport England have as well, and, and that varies depending on who you're talking with, but with an organisation like Parkrun that is international and has lots of income sources, not just Sport England, that, you know, there, there are lim limitations to Sport England's influence as well. Um, but yeah, we're just hitting time now. Ap apologies again, um, and I think Anne-Marie um, would be happy for me to share apologies on her behalf as well um, for the slight change in agenda today. I think it's been a really useful discussion, though, so hopefully, um, hopefully people have found it useful and interesting. Um, and I think... Uh, it gives me uh, food for thought that you know recent agendas we've we've tended to have lots of people speaking and um, there's probably needs to be more space for open discussions like this because I, th I think it's been really valuable for people to be able to raise um, raise uh, questions and and have a kind of open open discussion about it so so I think that's been been really good so th thank you all for your for your contributions and, and for all for coming and um, I hope to see you all again in a couple of weeks time. Thank <laughs> you.